an unfathomable betrayal. A beautiful legend that was rooted in official symbolism. A ruler who raised the monetary system to the highest possible level of its development. The Sumi Museum of Regional Ethnography. Today, this museum houses the largest collection of materials and documents in history, ethnography, nature and archaeology of the Sumi Oblast. 45,000 exhibits are located in one of the most beautiful buildings of the city, a monument of history and architecture of the 19th century. In the early years of its existence, the museum exhibited slightly more than 10,000 displays, half of which were artistic and were stored in 21 unheated rooms. But neither the severe working conditions, the Stalin repressions, the Nazi occupation nor robbery destroyed this renowned cultural learning and research institution. And today the funds of the local history museum contain valuable exhibits, both items nationalized by the Bolsheviks from aristocrats and the exhibits found by scientists under the ground. There are also random findings, such as these. Three hundred and seventy-seven coins of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. The museum exhibits coins of the Polish king Sigismund III Vasa, the Prussian duke Georg Wilhelm, the Swedish king Gustav Adolf II, and the Swedish queen Christina Augusta. The oldest coin was dated back to 1620, and the newest one was dated back to 1648. 287 out of 377 coins are Poltoraks, a coin equal to 1.5 Groschen owned by the Polish king Sigismund III Vasa, which were called differently in different regions of Ukraine. In Galicia and Volyn, they were called Pultorak, while in the Chernihiv and Kyiv regions and in Podilia, they were called Poltorak. Some time later, they were called Czechs. Almost three quarters of the coins from the treasure of King Sigismund III Vasa include Czechs, which were considered the most common coin at the time in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. On the opposite side of these coins you can see a shield divided into two parts. The arms of Poland were depicted in two parts of the coin, and the arms of Lithuania were depicted in two other parts. Besides, the Vasa dynasty's emblem was depicted in the center of the shield, and on the reverse side was the year of coinage and the symbol of royal power, the orb. Moreover, there is an inscription which was made during the reign of the king when the coin was minted. Tray polkers which were minted during the reign of some rulers are the second in the number of the coins from this treasure. Coins equal to the equivalent of one and a half groschen, which were minted on the territory of Prussia and the Swedish Baltic countries, were called drapolkers. These coins had similar images both on the front and reverse side. They differed only by the inscription. There was the name of the king, during whose reign the coin was minted. Among the coins that are represented in the treasures, 16 Prussian coins were minted during the reign of Prussian Duke Georg Wilhelm. 43 coins were minted during the reign of Swedish King Gustav of the second Adolf and seven Drey Polkers in the times of Christina Augusta. This is far from a complete list of the coins that were found. And everything happened during the construction work in Sumi in October 1975. Installing communications in the area of the present-day Vilnia Lane and Gorky Street, workers stumbled upon two pots made in the Cossack style. The researchers immediately arrived on the place of discovery and studied this unique treasure. 
Besides various coins of Polish and Lithuanian minting, the workers found 12 coins of Sigismund III Vasa, as well as Trojaks, coins equal to the equivalent of three Polish groschens, Shostaks equal to six groschens, and one Ort Taler, a coin equal to 10 to 18 groschens. It was also a common coin in Poland at the time. It was found among the coins of the second Polish treasury. Sigismund III from the Vasa dynasty, the King of Poland, the Grand Duke of Lithuania and the King of Sweden ascended to the Polish throne on December 27, 1587. During his reign, the monetary system of the Polish and Lithuanian Commonwealth achieved its greatest development. But at the beginning of his reign, the monetary system needed to be reformed. First, he banned the circulation of the foreign coins. Then he carried out devaluation of coins of small denominations and introduced a new coin. It was during the reign of Sigismund III in 1609 when the Ort Thaler was introduced. It was equal to a quarter of a Thaler. In 1614, a new coin called Poltorak, equal to one and a half Groschen, was issued. It was during the reign of King Sigismund III Vasa, when a large number of mints producing different types of coins functioned in Poland. The most common coins in the Ukrainian lands were Czechs, together with Prussian and Swedish drapolkers. The mints worked in Malborg, Vshova, Bydgoszcz, Lublin, Krakow, Gdansk, Riga, Vilnius, Mitawa and Königsberg. So coins for the needs of the Polish and Lithuanian Commonwealth were minted on the territory of Prussia and Sweden. The coin that was minted in 1633 with the inscription Gustav II Adolf is of a great interest. But there is another interesting fact. Gustav II Adolf, one of the most educated rulers of his time, who was fluent in German, Dutch, French, Italian and Latin and understood Russian and Polish, was the King of Sweden. He ascended to the throne in 1611 and left it in 1632 due to his death. But how could a coin with an inscription of Gustav II have been minted in 1633, if his daughter Christina was already the Queen of Sweden at that time? But this is not the only mystery of this treasure. As it is historically known, the Sumer region of Ukraine was established with the consent of the Moscow Tsar. It is rather Sloboda Ukraine than the Sumy region because Sloboda Ukraine or Slobozhanshina includes a part of the territories of the Sumy, Kharkiv, Luhansk and Donetsk oblasts. With regard to these territories, we can say that since the 17th century these lands only started to be inhabited. Why? Because previously prosperous lands, in the period of Kievan Rus, were subjected to a huge invasion of the Mongol Tatars and fell into decay. The lands were settled in stages since the 1630s. For example, the Sumy region and the city of Sumy appeared only in 1655. This is the second wave of settlement that we can even call colonization. The population resettled in groups, forming so-called Slobodas, settlements whose inhabitants were exempted from feudal duties and served the state. That is, they were people of the sovereign. According to historians, Sumi was established in 1655. But there are other versions. For example, before the establishment of the city of Sumi, the city of Kharkiv was established in 1654, and some years earlier, other cities of Sloboda, Ukraine, were established. There are several versions of the origin of the name of the city Sumy. According to one of them, the city got its name from the rivers Suma and Sumka, which washed it from both sides. But there is another more romantic version, which fits quite well into the context of our program. We know the legend that three Cossack sacks with silver coins were found here, but this is just a legend. 
Nevertheless, it was this beautiful legend that formed the basis of the first banner of the Sumi Slobada Cossack Regiment, dating back to 1651 and later the official arms of the city. By the way, the regiments became the main administrative units of Slobada Ukraine. There were several regiments on the territory of Slobodai Ukraine. One of them was the Okhtyrka regiment. Most often its colonels were those who managed the process of the resettlement of people in these areas. In particular, the colonel's posts could be even inherited, as they were elected, but this had to be approved by the Moscow Tsar. The first Sumi colonel was Herasim Kondratiev, and he was the first Osachi, or settler. An Osachi was an individual who led a certain group of people to a given territory and founded a settlement there. Speaking about trade and economic relations, I must say that the inhabitants of Slobozhanshina were well oriented towards Muscovy. There were specific trade routes there, and in particular, they were oriented towards trading with Moscow merchants. As we see both politically and economically, the residents of Slobodai Ukraine, including Sumy, were focused on Moscow. Moreover, they depended on it. According to Kharkiv ethnographer and researcher of the history of Slobodai Ukraine, Andriy Paramonov, they depended on Russia so much that Sloboda Cossack regiments even took part in the destruction of the Zaporizhian siege three times. But how did the treasure of Polish, Prussian and Swedish coins appear on the territory of Sumy? And we must admit that that was not a small piece of treasure. Three hundred and seventy-seven coins are preserved in pots. There are coins of different denominations. Having such a sum of money, someone could buy a decent amount of goods. After all, the Czech coin was equal to one twenty-fourth of a dollar. For example, there is information that a book cost about twenty dollars at that time. To answer this question, we need to find out where the people that settled these lands came from. But this is a topic for the next program. Stay tuned.